Welcome to Village TV, the story behind small business and entrepreneurs. Right now, we're going to be talking about how creating business success needs a helicopter. And for that, I'm joined by the one and only Justin Tamsin. How are you, Matt? Yeah, great. Thanks, Sean. Really good. It's so good to have you on the show. I'm so glad we're going to be talking about helicopters because I've always wanted one. Mm. <laughs> That's really not what we're talking I about. I thought you already had a helicopter. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> what what we're really talking about today is the fact that to get real success in your business, you need to actually leave your business to enhance your business. And when we say that, you need to get out, have a look from a different perspective if you really want success. And this is what Justin talks about a lot with a lot of businesses out here, out there to help them grow. Now, Justin, what is it that – how are people getting it wrong? Let's go back to this concept of leaving, getting out of your business. Yeah. What What do you mean by that in terms of getting into a helicopter? Well, I don't think it matters what size the business is. <laughs> okay. Or the helicopter. Or the size of the helicopter. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be the new one that I think Prince William just got. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter the size of the business. It could be a department in a big business okay. or it could be a small business. But what happens is on a day-to-day -day basis, when we're running our business, we play whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole? Yeah. Okay. So you put your money in the slot when you go to work. All right. And all these little problems come up, and you're just going bang, 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 bang. And ah. depending on your business, they pop up even faster. So you're banging even quicker. And at the end of the day, you are physically exhausted. You're emotionally drained. But has the business gone forward? Okay. No, it hasn't. So the concept of getting out of your business and into a helicopter. Yes is not just out of your business so that you can free think, but actually get out, and I like the helicopter because you're up high and you can look down on the business or down on the department and see how it's all flowing, okay. seeing if the systems are working, seeing if the procedures are all in place. If you're up high, you can see a lot more than if you're in the in the woods. This seems like common sense. Sense, sense. Yes, that's the word. That's C E N T S. <laughs> common sense. Why don't more managers or business owners get out of the business? Well, I think it might be two reasons. One is they don't have time. Now, if they got in a helicopter, maybe they would have more time oh. to do it. <laughs> but I also think the other reason they don't do it is they're not sure actually what to look for. Okay. So, okay, I get in my helicopter and I look down. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's get back down in there. So when you get in your helicopter, you've got to be having an agenda about what you're trying to look at. Are you looking at it from an operational perspective, a strategic perspective, uh, an analysis with competitors? Why, why are you in the helicopter? What's the agenda behind that? And I think if you get that right, then there's a purpose behind jumping in that copter. So it's always a case of allocating specific time to look at specific areas in your business from a different viewpoint. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, like great. for me, I, I'm a fan of jumping in a helicopter and looking at your marketing or then looking at your sales or looking at your key performance indicators, human resource management, strategic development, different little issues. Now you could spend a whole day in your helicopter and spend an hour on each of those if you wanted to or you could just spend an hour looking down. So. When we talk about how long to get off site and look at it in the helicopter's perspective, how long? Is, is an hour enough? Is a day enough? What is what is the time frame people should look at? Well, because time is the issue, <laughs> um, I don't really care. What I care about is that somebody gets in that helicopter to anal analyse the business. I think you really need about a good 90 minutes. Minimum. Minimum. <laughs> Okay. Minimum 90 minutes. But if that's what you can allocate, and you can allocate 90 minutes a fortnight or 90 minutes a month, I could almost guarantee your business is going to go forward. Excellent. And you would suggest people go off-site? Yeah. I think a fresh environment, maybe hmm, village, village, North, North Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> um, going off-site is great because it puts you in a neutral position, and it literally is a different environment so you're getting different thoughts and processes. You're not, not interrupted all that time. <laughs> exactly. Now, one of the places I like and I recommend is that you actually go somewhere where the business you might learn from. Interesting. So, for example, if you're in a hospitality business and customer service is really important to you, then maybe your 90 minutes is spent in a five-star hotel in the lobby. 
in the bar there and just watch how the staff interact, watch how they service members. So it's a learning experience, great tax write-off. Um, <laughs> But it's also an experience for and you to... Good lunches. Great, great lunch. <laughs> yeah, not too many of these. Just one a month is a helicopter view. Otherwise, the helicopter will never take off. But it gives you an, a way to be able to look at other businesses as well. Okay. And so do you look at the, your same businesses all the time? Would you look at other businesses opportunity as well, other business ideas as well to enhance your business? Yeah, again, I guess this is my opinion. You can learn from it's other... generally a good opinion, so well, yeah, well, let's give it. <laughs> see how we go. Um, what I see is if we compare our business to every other business in our same business category, yeah. we only get as good as okay. businesses in our category. Okay. So if, I'll give you an example. Uh, British Airways, when they wanted to improve the maintenance of their aeroplanes, they looked at all the other airlines and went, well, what are we learning here? <laughs> Not much. And they went, we want to be efficient. We want teamwork and we want speed. What business does all of those three things? Formula One pit crew. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. So they analysed Formula One pit crews to see how they could improve the maintenance of their aeroplanes and the servicing of their aeroplanes and the turning around of their aeroplanes. Because if they just looked at other airlines, they're only going to get as good as other airlines. Wow. So if you're a cafe, you only look at other cafes, you only get as good as a cafe. I work a lot in the fitness industry, so I say to people, don't look at other gyms because then you're only as good as other gyms. Yes. You need to look outside your industry in order to grow your business and enhance it. That's now I think that's such a good point, and it's and I guess you even look in sports, a lot of codes look at other codes to great to example. grow to you know mm. whether it be fitness or hydration or whatever it is. It's Generally, other industries have worked on things or specialised in areas right. to grow. And you often find when you're looking at other industries uh, or talking to people in other industries, they're not as protective. So again, if you're a cafe and you're talking to another cafe owner, he's like, well, I'm not really sure I want to tell you all my <laughs> secrets. But if you're talking to someone who's in customer service about how to improve the customer service in your cafe, they're probably going to be more open knowing that you're not going to compete with them because you're a cafe and how are you going to compete with a five-star hotel? Such now, now, obviously, some areas that we've chatted to about each other or we've been chatted with each other about is um, the round table concept. Can you tell people a bit more about that? Yeah, it it's not a round table. <laughs> it's a group of it's people. It's an oval table. This is an oval table. It's a group of people that you believe can influence and help your business. Okay. And it goes way back. Obviously, we know about the Knights of the Round Table. Homer in the Iliad, he talked about bringing his key people together to work out how they can progress the cities in Greece. We look at uh, Benjamin Franklin actually had a group of people that he brought together to talk about how they can improve business and life in America. Fascinating that this has gone on for thousands and thousands of years. But in business now, we kind of go, well, I don't want to tell anybody my warts and all issues in the business. Yeah. So uh, my view is if we can get a bunch of people together, we can grow our business. Who would be on that round table? Well, if you're a small business owner, you kind of need an expert who's probably a customer or a friend, someone who's strong in marketing, someone who's strong in accounting, someone who's strong in human resource management. And you sit down and maybe every three months, you jump in your helicopter with your group, your board of board of directors, mm. and your round table, and you share where your business is at. Okay. And you learn from these people who are experts. That's a good idea. Uh, again, they look at it from a different perspective. Yes. So if we, I use an analogy of a beach ball. Okay. okay you imagine a beach ball. It's got colours all around it. If I put a beach ball here, I'm looking from this way. Okay. You're looking from this way. You see different colours to me because yes. a beach ball has multiple colours. But it's still a beach ball. <laughs> but we see the beach ball from different perspectives. Yes. And I guess our own life experiences, other exactly. learnings, other achievements, whatever it is, yeah. all, it's how we view life and business. And So that's a, good, that's a great analogy. So if we get a whole bunch of people and we put a beach ball in the middle, which is an issue in the business. It might be, how do I expand? How do I market? What My sales are down. My leads are down. I'm losing staff. Whatever that issue is, it's a beach ball. 
each person from around the table sees that from a different perspective. And so as an owner of that business, you can hear all those perspectives, which gives you clarity in a way to move forward. Okay. Now, some of these people you might need to pay, but generally people are happy to come and have a breakfast or a lunch yes. and spend two hours with you because they will benefit in their business as, as well. Because well, they learn at the same point. Exactly right. People. Yeah. That's such a great, so easy, and again, low cost, easy, oh. and, and it's a, it, it forces you to get real and get honest with yourself because you've got other people to hold you accountable. Most of the time we say, how's business, and we go, oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, it's good, thanks. <laughs> Keep doing what we're doing. Deep down, it sucks. <laughs> but I don't want to tell you that because no, you think I'm going to be a failure yeah. or I'm weak. You're going to judge me, man. You're yeah, judging. yeah, judging's a good, good word. So if we get this group together and there's a real deep level of trust, then I can be honest and say, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I <laughs> need <we> help. <laughs> I need some help around keeping my staff. So the agenda for today's 90-minute roundtable meeting is how do I incentivize my staff? How do I keep them? How do I make them work better together? What would you do? 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 Cool. So Excellent. It's a very powerful tool. What, what are the, some of the best results you've had where an owner or a manager has somebody jumped into their helicopter, gone for a ride, and, and really discovered some amazing things that have helped them change their business? So two spring to mind. The first one is we had a roundtable meeting in Auckland, of all places. What were you doing there? <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't coincide with any rugby. <laughs> poor, poor planning on my behalf. And... The meeting was about to start. Everybody was sort of arriving, and one of the members of the round table came in and said, is it okay if I go home now? I said, we haven't even started the meeting. He said, I flew in this morning. I've spent three hours walking around Auckland, and I had two major rocks in my business that I've now solved. By walking around? I said, what, by walking around Auckland? Really? <laughs> and he said... It's because I got out of my business, out of my town, and it, I was just walking and thinking and walking and thinking and walking and thinking, and it just, the paradigm that I was in completely changed. And it was, wow. Gosh, go for more walks. Yeah. <laughs> You're enjoying a walking club. Well, <laughs> you know, there is some thought process behind walking and thinking at the same time, and it's hard for us men because we can't do two things at once. But... The interesting thing is that the fact that he admitted by getting out of the business, yes. in this case not a helicopter, an <laughs> aeroplane, but got in a helicopter and looked at his business from a different way in a completely different environment where there was no pressure, it was just fresh thinking, yep. he was able to solve two major rocks in his business that he'd had for three months. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. I'm, and the second one? The second one uh, is... Well, we had a, um, it was a health club owner, and he ran a basic PT studio. Okay. It was just a personal training studio. It was making okay sort of money. It was all right. Came to the round table and said, look, I'm really just making okay money. I want to make more money. I want to do something different. And we said, well, find a different niche. Yeah. And this was uh, nearly seven years ago now, and he was, I think he was the third CrossFit club in Australia to open. Okay. It's pretty niche as it was at the time. Completely. And he was he had to educate people on what this product was and, and how good it was. But he completely reinvented his business. But he came to the round table and he said, okay, month first meeting, I'm only making okay money. I think I've got to find a niche. We told him, go off and find one. Came back second meeting, said, okay, I found one. It's CrossFit. Here's the business model. What do you guys think? And so he had 10 people around the table refining that business model okay. to now he's a super successful club owner in Sydney. Awesome. It's a, just the power of having 10 people look at that beach ball yes. from different perspectives. And with honesty and real good yeah. perspectives and yeah. holding yourself. I think it's a great idea. So take Justin in terms of this idea. Go form a round table. Jump into a helicopter, have a look from a different perspective, enjoy the lunch, and <laughs> and really make the most of it. And and as you say, whether it's walking or getting on a round table, you need to take that time away from your business. You need to get out of your business, change the perspective, change the view, yeah. um, learn from other industries, learn from other cross industries as well, and and your own industry, 
and it would be amazed to see how you can change your business overnight. Absolutely. As I say, hashtag. <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> you enhance your business. Enhance, yeah. yeah. That's such a, so hashtag enhance. This is Justin Tamsit. Justin, if people want to find you, learn more about you, work out how they can do roundtable stuff, where they go? Uh, probably the easiest spot is justintamset.com or activemgmtmanagement.com.au and we're happy to help out any size business to give you, because uh, we've got agendas and we help you be able to set up your own and run your own roundtable and give you some advice around that. Fantastic. So really good concept to get your business in a different gear and I'm sure a lot of you watching this would like that. Make sure you subscribe to Village TV. A lot more shows coming up. Thank you so much, Justin, for being part of this. Pleasure. I really appreciate it. Lovely. And I'm sure a lot of the guys are going to be taking a lot of that advice to heart and putting in their business. I highly recommend it. So that's another Village TV show. Make sure you subscribe. It's been great having you. Until next time, goodbye.